Okay, so, welcome to Painting for Fun with Christopher. My name is Christopher Rehm. I live in Springer, Germany. And this is going to be a YouTube show about me painting. So, yeah, it's probably about watching paint dry, mostly. Um, let's see, what should I tell you about myself? Uh, I'm a part-time artist. I live in Springer, Germany. I've been painting for and drawing for 50 years on and off. I had about five years of training at the Virginia Tech School of Architecture and Design and Art and Architecture, so I have some professional training. And I've been doing painting and drawing on and off, either as a hobby or something more serious, most of my life, here and there. So, anyways, that's some background about me. Um, I work in oils, watercolors, and um, sometimes acrylic. Um, I have a little home studio which I've outfitted here in my apartment which is really really tiny because I live in Germany and space costs a lot of money here but I have a nice little home studio and um, it's well stocked with stuff and let's see what else should I talk about um, I'll talk in these videos a little bit about what inspires me what I like to paint painting should be fun man drawing should be fun art should be fun music should be fun I think Somehow I think we're losing something there. So I'm going to try to inspire you with that. And let's see, what else? Um, I'm going to try to show you everything that somebody's taught me along the way or that I've learned through my own hard work. There's lots of videos here on YouTube about how to paint and how to draw. So this isn't going to be really totally an art instruction video. But I will tell you, you know, here's why I'm doing this, or here's why I'm doing that, or this is what inspired me to do this, or this is why I like doing that. So it's maybe more a little bit of look at w what makes me tick artistically. So we'll talk about that some. Um, anyways, that's the basic idea. Um, what are some of my influences? Um, Charlie McIntosh, Albrecht Durer, um, William Turner. John William Waterhouse, Daniel Rossetti, um, all the pre-Raphaelite painters, um, all the British watercolorists from 1600 to 1850, 1900, Arthur Rackham, um, all the great illustrators. I like stuff like that that's basically sort of classical illustration, golden age of illustration, painting, that kind of stuff. I like a lot of Dutch painters. I spent a lot of time in Holland, so that's a big influence on me. The light there is incredible. Um, it really is. There's some places in this world where the light is just wow, like New Mexico or Arizona. And there's something about the atmosphere there and the way the light hits things and everything reflects. It's just beautiful. Well, same thing in Holland. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time there. Inspiration. You know, mostly I paint at home in the studio. I do some field painting, but not a lot. Um, I'm more likely to go out and take pictures and make sketches and then come back and produce something from that, but sometimes I paint out in the field. Um, so that's a little bit about my influences. Um, what kind of materials do I use? Um, well, based on 50 years of experience and listening to everybody I've ever talked to, I try to buy absolutely the best quality materials I can. Student materials are not cheaper than professional grade materials because they have less pigmentation in the colors, for example. So really, you're not getting anything, you're not saving anything by buying student grade materials. So my advice is just bite the bullet and buy good quality stuff right from the beginning. I like Talon's Rembrandt. I like Old Holland. Uh, Schmincke is good. Um, what else have I been using? Sennelier. Um, I got a bunch of Sennelier watercolors recently. They're great. Um, I like these Russian um, White Knights watercolors from St. Petersburg. Those are cool. But sort of the mainstays of my pa painting stuff is Old Holland and Tolland's Rembrandt. Um, for canvases, I use whatever's available because I prep them. Um, for watercolor paper, only 100% cotton. Anything else, forget it. Water just does not flow on anything with with 
wood pulp in it. So don't even try. Just go buy good watercolor paper, bite the bullet, it's expensive, yeah. Learn how to paint on the 90 pound or the 140 pound, and then when you're doing something nice, buy the 300 pound. It's just easier to work on. Um, materials are half the battle. Um, for brushes, I use mostly Da Vinci brushes. For watercolors, they're all mostly Cosmotop spins or Kolonskis. Kolonskis are a lot cheaper in Europe. Um, for oils, again, they're all Da Vinci's, and they're a mixture of a synthetic brushes, bristle brushes, some sables and other things like that. So yeah, that's basically what I'm using material-wise. I'll talk more about that in the videos. But yeah, buy, buy decent quality materials because it really makes it a lot easier to make things look good. It, it's just a false economy to buy cheap crap and then expect to get, oh yeah, this is going to be a really good drawing or painting. There's some things you can you can cut back on there's other things you really got to have the right stuff so we'll talk about that in some of these videos and I'll, like I said I'll talk about what I'm doing um, I'll show you some, some of my works in progress if you like what you see there's some information at the end where you can look at my artworks either on my website or um, Patreon, Patreon or some of these other places um, I do have an Etsy site if you're interested where I sell my works but you can also contact me directly at my site so anyways, that's it for me. Um, that's my introduction, and we'll see you real soon in another video. Bye.